Well, after slowly making our way through crime and punishment, this next book that we'll be reading, Animal Farm, takes our read in a completely different direction, both in the size of the book and in the tone. Animal Farm was written by George Orwell, who was an English writer in the 20th century, who is well known for two of the greatest works of political literature that have been published in the past century, Animal Farm, which we're reading right now, and then also 1984, which you may have also heard about. Now, there are two different elements of Animal Farm that are important the political aspect, and then the human nature aspect. Now, most people, when they think about Animal Farm, they initially think about its political aspect and the impact that it's had politically. George Orwell was one of the first public advocates against the USSR, and so Animal Farm, as well as 1984, can really be read as a critique of Soviet Russia. In fact, if you follow Animal Farm closely, you'll be able to see that many of the major figures and events in the book correspond very closely to what actually happened in the rise of Soviet Russia. Farmer Jones is Tsar Nicholas II, Napoleon is Joseph Stalin, and Snowball is Leon Trotsky. In many ways, then, Animal Farm is a political allegory that takes what happens in Soviet Russia and then simply retells it in the form of an animal fable. Taken in this light, the novel is not only a clear condemnation of Soviet practices, but it also has strong political implications. However, there's another aspect of the novel as well that's less obvious, and that's how it portrays human nature. While Animal Farm is primarily a political allegory, I don't think it would have had quite the impact and have remained so popular today if it was only a political allegory. The reason that people still read it today, and the reason that we're reading it for this class, is not just because it's a political allegory, but also because Orwell understands human nature, specifically how dictators are able to rise to power and why people allow themselves to be oppressed. Pay careful attention in the book to how it is that Napoleon is able to get into power. What tactics does he use, and how does he publicly justify his actions? Also pay close attention to why the other animals end up submitting to him. While the animals originally rebel in order to win themselves more freedom, as the book ends up showing, freedom doesn't remain their primary focus for long. So consider what it is that the animals truly desire, and what light that has to shed on what people generally want in general. We all say that we want freedom, but do we really? Animal Farm raises a lot of important questions about politics and about the state of human nature. Now, because Patrick Henry College's Faith and Reason Day this upcoming Friday, I actually won't be able to be there to teach this class, but I believe Mr. Weitz will be teaching on Animal Farm instead on that day. Animal Farm is a quick and fun read, and it isn't as heavy as some of the other reading that we'll be doing this semester, so I hope you all enjoy reading the book and then discussing in class. See you guys in a couple of weeks!